Hey everyone, I recently started a new game project and I wanted to learn how to make a customizable character that you see at the start of a lot of games, especially in RPGs. Uh, so I've been working on that for the past few days and I wanted to share my progress because I think I got a pretty good setup. So let me, before I get into how everything works, just run the game and show you. So I have this little guy here that uh, kind of bops up and down and I have some basic control over him. I can move him around. And then if I press the C key, I get this create character menu where I have some different options I can cycle through. I can pick a hat to wear on my head. I can pick some different eyes and mouth options. Uh, if I don't like any of these, I can hit the reset button. Go back to default. I can give myself a name. Name him Guy. And then when I get something I'm happy with, like this, I can hit confirm and apply it to my character. And close the menu. And you can see here I can move around and all the animations are working in sync with my updates. So how about now I jump inside this player? and show you what that animation setup looks like. Okay, so here we are in the player, and there's a few different nodes here, but the one I wanna focus on is this character node. If I drop this down, you can see that there are a few different types of sprites in here. I have the body, eyes, mouth, and hat all separated into their own nodes. The body, eyes, and mouth are all animated sprite 2Ds, and they have a unique sprite frames resource. Each of those resources has three animations in them, uh, an attack, an idle, and run. Uh, and each of these has the same name, uh, number of frames, and frame rate. For the hat, I instead am editing the region of the hat to get the different options. Um, I change this data, the rec data, and the offset to place the hat properly and I use an animation player to move the hat correctly with the animation. So in here you see the same three, idle, run, and attack. Uh, all these animations are coming from one big sprite sheet. Uh, I can see that here. Go into this here. This is what I'm using. Uh, if I zoom in, you can just see I got all the the body shapes and all the different eyes and mouths that I'm using so that's why I'm doing a lot of region editing for the hats because they're all just here. You can go into the actual character script and I won't go over every method in here but some that I want to point out are all of these play methods. So I have a general play method that takes in a string name of an animation and then it plays that across all of the different body parts at once. So when I'm calling a different animation I just pass the string I want and that way because they all use the same name it works across all these animations. There's also this sync animations method. I use this when the character gets updated just to reset everything back to frame zero so that everything can play in sync. And there's also this update customization section or selection. I'll go over this a bit more later but this is when all of your new options get applied to the character. All right, that's everything I wanted to cover in here. So now let's go over to the actual customization UI and I can show that setup. For the character creator, all the nodes being used are different types of control nodes. I wanted to keep it this way so everything worked nicely with the layout and anchor functions that you get from control nodes. For the actual flow of how this works, there's basically just a bunch of buttons, uh, different types of buttons like reset, confirm, these optioned ones sending signals up to this parent node uh, that has the script on it controlling, uh, updating the character and showing all the different displays. For that actual character portrait, it uses a very similar approach as how the hats are set up on the in-world character. So I have them all split up into different texture recs and then when you click one of these arrows it is updating the region and offset data of that texture. So if we go into the script, we can see some of that. Uh, some methods to highlight here um, is these three. 
I have these like sets of three methods for every uh, section of the body. So you have your signals connected to these two methods, the on head options next and on head options previous. These are connected to these arrows here. Uh, so for these, it either just moves the current head, which is tracked up here, uh, by one or back from one. Set head updates the texture. So you get your new region data from there. And then the uh, head options button line here is just actually setting this number to the correct number. Um, all of the different data to change out the different options are in these arrays at the top of the method here. So you can see head options, head offset, eye options, mouth options. These are all just arrays with the region data or the offset data needed to correctly place the objects in the portrait here. The final thing to point out is this on confirm button method that is doing a apply selection emit. So it's emitting a signal when you click this button. That signal is declared up at the top here. Uh, and as you can see, it needs to take in a head, eyes, and mouth integer. To show you how the options are getting applied to the player, I can kind of talk about the communication of this signal, where it's going. So here we are back at the main scene. And as you can see, we have our character creation object here uh, that has a signal on it. And that signal is going up to uh, the main script here. And this main script has, again, more arrays holding all the references to um, the hat datas and the sprite frames used to apply the different customization options to the player. The reason I have this on the main script instead of just directly on the player is because I might try to expand this system to create, you know, random NPCs or something in the future. But if all you want in your game is to just have a dynamic player that you can swap out options on, you could have these right on the player and it'd be perfectly fine. So going into this script, we can see that signal method here on character customization apply selection uh, that's taking in the head, eyes, and mouth we pointed out before. And what that is doing is it's calling a specific method on the player character. Uh, update customization selection. This is the method I kind of brushed over before and it is just going through each of these options here and using the integer to say which one of these to select and pass to the player so we can go back to the player and look at that method again uh, we can see it takes in a hat data um, new eye sprite frames and new mouth sprite frames and what it's doing is it is taking each of these and rewriting these references at the top to use the new information and then it's using these on ready variables that are the actual reference to your sprites and setting it to the new info that you've passed in this method uh, and then after it's updated all of that it just calls the sync animations to make sure everything's playing in sync so yeah that's pretty much everything i wanted to cover in this video uh, let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful or if there's anything you would improve i wanted to share this because i couldn't really find anything that was covering connecting a character creator to a fully animated character like this. I don't think this is a perfect solution. I already have some things I want to try to tweak and refine about this approach, but I don't know, maybe as I keep going with this project, I can share updates if people are enjoying it. Um, if you're wondering what these are, I'm just working on some attacks, but yeah, that's it for now. Um, so thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.